Okay, so today I'm going to demonstrate all the modeling tools you need to get started in Maya. Um, I will just go through, in case you haven't used Maya before, the buttons I'm pressing. So just to rotate and navigate in Maya, so you can press Alt and just click with your mouse. So that would be left, left click, but I'm using a Wacom tablet at the moment. And so Alt and right click, that will be moving around and then alt and middle mouse, that'll be the zoom in and out. Okay, so there's a few ways in which we can look at modeling. We can either do box modeling, which is essentially starting with an object and then deforming it into a shape that we want or then extruding it further, or we can start with edge modeling, which is creating a polyplane and then, you know, pulling it out, creating ob objects in that way. So all these menus at the top, so we do have the modeling tab, all these different tabs here can also be accessed by holding down spacebar. So some of these options that you see at the top of the screen from the modeling area, they're more just an advisory. So if you are modeling, they will be things that you might be using rather than seeing everything displayed here. Be aware on the right hand side, we do have this other tab, which is the modeling toolkit. If you cannot see that, that would be in Windows and Modeling Toolkit, Modeling Editors, Modeling Toolkit. So it should be on the right hand side by default. I have an extra one, for example, like XGen. So I was playing with that and then that saves into my preferences. So that stays there. So if you don't have the Modeling Toolkit, you can load it up. You should have the Outliner, but if you don't, that's also in Windows, Outliner. This is where you can see your objects popping up. So all this stuff here, we can just ignore. You can change what is um, what's being displayed. Um, so all this stuff I can ignore. It's just related to, I don't know, you've got these IK solvers. That's more like rigging default stuff. And there's a Lambert. So that's the default shader that gets applied to everything. So just forget about all of that. So I'm going to start with creating objects. So if you want to create any objects in Maya, you can hold down spacebar, go to create. So you've got NURBS primitives, and these are pretty much um, pre-smoothed pre objects, kind of. So they're not ideal to model with. You want to be using uh, polygonal shapes. So these will be more um, controllable. So in here, so if I make a NURBS sphere, you can see it's got these, um, it's being pretty much smooth at the same time. So if I if I start grabbing some of this, I will show, explain how I'm changing some of these options. But as you can see, it's subdividing, um, well, the, the model is pretty much pre-subdivided. So that's why we're getting this, this uh, smoother shape coming out of it, which seems good, but it's actually pretty naff. So we're gonna forget about that. So I'll go hold down spacebar, go to create polygon primitives. So we have a few things. Um, the th objects I'd use the most would be either cubes, cylinders, plane, that's just a single polyplane, maybe spheres, but it's generally cubes. So you can start with a cube. So now it's popped up in my outliner on the left hand side. It's P, P cube one. And what we could do with this is by default, if I go to the attribute editor, so you get the P cube one and then the P cube shape, this is the actual polygonal geometry. So these faces, so this is um, the actual object in the right hand side. And so our render is Arnold. So if I wanted to do any specific render based changes with this object i would go to the the polygon object or the shape area and then i can change them down here um, the main one to be aware of is if you're rendering uh, you want your object to be smooth in the rendering you would go to the arnold tab where i just was then subdivisions and then turn turn this on then you've got iterations for the amount rather than if i wanted this smooth otherwise you know, I would switch between pressing one on my keyboard. So this is the default 
so no subdivisions, and then three, and that's that's a base uh, subdivisions. As you can see, it turns into a sphere because it's uh, it's trying to pull the edges together and smooth off the in between. You can see a bit of subdivisions where it's added in some cuts, but we're not seeing any extra edges added at the moment. So there's not enough cuts in here, so it doesn't. So it's pulling the edges together. So we end up with something like that. Whenever you create an object, it will also get a piece of history, which is the build history. So if I look on the attribute editor, we can also see it in the channel box. So I have this polycube one. So we get these options here to add, you know, depth, height, width. They are also visible in the channel box editor in inputs. So I can click on this input and then change it here. You can also select when you're in the channel box editor, you can select an option, let's say the subdivision width, middle mouse and scroll left and right. And it will change the amount of, in this instance, the subdivisions on that area. So there are pros and cons to altering this. So you would think, oh, okay, yeah, I can, I could subdivide this and then I can cut into my model and then later on cut it up a bit more with this. But unfortunately that's not the case. So let's say, actually I just want to delete one. So, so let's say I want to manipulate my cube. So I can hold down right click and then I've got a few options that pop up. When you start doing anything with models, you've got to keep in mind that wherever you are in Maya, these, these uh, quick menus and things like that, they're related to whatever is selected. So if I click here, I try and drag out, nothing is happening. If I right click, I don't really have any objects. I can do select all, so that will select everything in the scene because that option, these options are related to this area that I'm highlighting, but there is nothing there. So if I select this object and want to edit it, what I can do is I can either right click. And so this will be essentially manipulating options for the object. Or I can go to the modeling toolkit on the right hand side. And then I have a number of options here. And so up, up, at, um, up at the top, so we've got vertex mode, which is this, so the different points. So one polygon is essentially one square. So within, within each polygon, you have four vertices. So you go to vertex mode, and then it will tell me the selection. I do also have this heads up display, which is not always turned on. But if you would like to turn that on, then you could go to display, heads up display, and poly count. They can be useful because it will display, so the left hand side, that's overall, and then selected on the right hand side. So if I select a bunch of vertices, you see it's uh, telling me the count there. Right, so, so now that I've, I've gone to vertex mode here, but I'm trying to click off and then it's not letting me do anything. So this is a problem I see with a lot of students. Like, so they'll, they'll do something. So they'll pick, they'll pick a, a vertice, move it, and then be like, okay, that's fine. I'm done. I'll walk away from that scene now. But I can't do anything. It's because you're telling Maya you're still in vertex mode. So I would recommend by default, after doing anything with an object, just always right click, go to object mode. Or if you have the modeling toolkit, object mode is this. So if you're starting out in Maya, maybe keep this open so you can actually see the difference. So you select a vertex, you move it, you're happy with that, and then you go, okay, object mode. And we can see it's changed to object mode because the color of the edges change. And then we have this manipulator tool which recenters here. So then I can go back to moving my, my cube model.
You can change the manipulate tool in the middle by either using some hotkeys. So W is move, E is rotate, and R is scale. We can also change the size of the manipulate tool by pressing minus and plus on the keyboard to make it bigger and smaller. You can also change the manipulate tools on the left hand side by using these icons here. So we have the move, rotate and scale and then you could go back to the standard mouse but normally I'm always on the move icon so it doesn't really make too much of a difference. Okay, so in the modeling toolkit, we also have edge mode. So if you want to manipulate an edge of an object, then you would just, you could change it up here. So that's one way. Or within holding down right click, going to edge. And you can also, in edge mode, you can double click on objects. If there is a line, like these are single polygons, so it won't necessarily work in this in this instance. So let's make another another cube. Because if there are if there are conjoined polygons like in a line, you can select the complete edge. But in edge mode you can you can select the whole whole thing. Uh, let's let's add some subdivisions in onto this cube. So let's go ten. Let's put ten on every every side. Let's go to the edge. Okay, so let's see what happens. If, if I want if I want to select a line, if I double click one edge, okay, so I've got the line. And let's say I want another edge. So in order to do that, I can hold down shift. You see my cursor changes to the plus sign. So I can get the next line. And so on and so forth. You can also add to your selection in another secret menu. So if you hold down control and then right click, you see we get these, these different options. So with these edges selected, we can now extend our selection if we want. So if I go to edges and then I can go to edge perimeters, and it'll select the edges of the base selection. So some of these tools, are, are, uh, some of these selection tools are more useful than others. You can also select the edge loops, whoops. It's quite sensitive, especially when you're using a tablet. So, cause you, this tool, you can, there are lots of these secret menus so you can go back and forward, you can easily lose yourself a bit. So let's go to edge loop utilities to edge loop and it'll do the same thing as double tapping it. Sometimes when you double tap in one of these uh, selection modes like edge, vertex or face, when you double click it will select the whole object. If that is the case, if you want to select a line, you can select on one edge and hold down shift double double tap the one adjacent so now I have that line if I go back to vertex mode so again I can change at the top right hand side or I can do it by holding right click over the object go to vertex so if I double click this that selects the whole object so if I want a line I can click one then shift click the one adjacent to it. So if I select one and then want to create another selection that's rather than manually selecting particular vertices, what I could do is select one and then hold control, right click to vertices, to vertex perimeter, and that selects everything around it. So these, these menus, um, so that's more like the object selection menu. So when I go in there, 
the result will be different depending on the object. So, so let's. Uh, so I've selected this vertex, and I'll hold down Control, right click, to vertices, to vertex perimeter. So we get the outside of that. But with an edge, if we do the same, we're going to get a slightly different result. So to edge, to edges, to edge perimeter. So now we get this different sort of shape going on, but it's literally all the edges around it. We also have another selection mode, which is face. So you can go to the right hand side and select that. So now we're in face mode. Same rules apply for selection. So if I double tap, it will select the whole object. So if I want a line of them, then I would shift click to the adjacent one. So that was select, hold down shift, double, whoops, uh, hold down shift, double click on the adjacent, and then I have that. Now I can move that around. You can also do soft selection, which I can't actually remember, oh, there it is. So I'm so used to using hotkeys, so I, sometimes I forget where they are in the menus because it's just faster once you learn where everything is rather than going all the way to the top. So if you didn't have this modeling toolkit, you would have had to have just gone all the way to the top and then scroll through these menus and you know, it's, it just takes, takes even longer. So you can turn on soft select and what this does is it creates fall off so in any of these modes, so now I'm in face mode. So in any of these modes like vertex mode, edge mode, I can move in this, um, I can move the object or manipulate it in a soft manner. And you can, I haven't actually used this graph before, to be honest, like, because I'm used to, I'll show you how I, uh, I would do it. So let's go to face mode. So let's say it's off, but the hotkey is B. So I would do that. And then in order to change the scale, it is hold down B and left, actually, yeah, just left click on your mouse and drag left and right. So that, to me, that just feels more intuitive than messing around with these. It's a lot faster. So if I if I want to do a bit of a change, now I can pull that out, and then it's just uh, a bit more of an intuitive way of working. So because then you can keep on scaling your selection. Cool. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of that. That looked terrible. Let's make another object. Uh, so let's go to sphere. So something to be aware of with working uh, with modeling in Maya is you do want clean topology. So what does that mean? So as you can see at the top of this sphere, we have these triangles and that's not ideal. But saying that when, I, when it comes to smoothing, so I'm pressing three with the object selected, and that'll smooth. If I look there, I can't particularly see any anomalies, but if you do not have quads, so four-sided polygons, then you will end up getting some smoothing distortions. And that will come up later when I, I use some of the other modeling methods, because there are some which are useful in, um, well, they're, they're good and bad, like doing stuff like booleans, you can cut one object out of another. It's good, but the topology it creates is terrible. Okay, so with this object selected, let's take a look at some of the other options we could do. So we've got soft selection. We've got these different um, sort of like vertice, edge modes, uh, face mode, and I think this is this must be the UV mode. It's not popping up with a menu, but this is for when you create something in 3D, you then have to flatten it in a 2D area called the UV editor, and that's in order to apply images. Let's say if you want a picture from Google on your 3D object, you would create your object, and then it also has UV coordinates. 
So I will look at that in another tutorial. But essentially, it would be your 3D object, object flattened out so you can slap pictures onto it. Essentially, that's a very basic way of saying it. Okay, so in the modeling toolkit, we have a few things. We have mesh combine. So what that will do is, let's say I've modeled these two things. So that is my object, whatever the hell that is. And then I'll select one and then shift select the other. And combine. So now I have these two objects. So that's combine. And in fact, I can just, so I can combine that. And let's say I want to get rid of that. So then I can do separate. Now you can use separate for other things. So let's say I've modeled some extra stuff. Like I'll just do an extrusion from here. I will, I will demonstrate the extrusion stuff in a bit. I'll just walk through the modeling toolkit first. So let's say I've done that and I'm really happy with this extrusion. So I want to separate this. So while I'm in face mode, so on the top right hand side, I select these faces and this should work, but if it doesn't, it would either be separate or, okay, so no, separate is just with polygonal objects, but you can remove this area from that. So let's, because I've started it now, let's go through that. So I would then go to, where is it? Mesh tools, it's in there. So there are so many menus in Maya, it gets quite overwhelming really, especially if you're just starting to use the software. So I swear it must be separate or extract. It might actually be in extract. Or detach could work as well. But no, extract, so it's down there. So where was that? Edit mesh, extract. So now these two are highlighted. So without doing anything else, whenever I, whenever I manipulate something or use a command like I've just done there, I always go back to object mode. I just select that. So that means I can just freely select things again. And so they're highlighted green, so that means I'm just in object mode. And now I have this, this object, but the pivot is way off. So if I just want to fix that, then I will just hold down spacebar and go to modify center pivot. So now that's brought that up there. So I've got my sphere, I've got this separate, this area that I extruded and then I wanted it on its own. And now I've reset the pivot point for it. So then I can freely manipulate this object. So it's its own little entity. If I look at my outline on the left hand side, you can see we're starting to get history. So I've got this transform and it's created these groups. So that's this, these things occur when you're merging things together. Um, so some of this history, like this transform here, you do want to get rid of because if you start manipulating things, um, something that I've noticed with people starting out in Maya. So if I select this um, sphere, so I did a few changes. Everything that I was doing to it actually gets listed in the channel box editor and the attribute editor. So the channel box I can see under inputs. So I know that we started here, uh, sorry, the poly, poly sphere. So it would have started here because that's what was generated first. So we have this polysphere. And then as I combined objects, separated things, it's keeping a tab of what we were doing. So in theory, we could go back and change things. But I can guarantee if I start changing the amount of subdivisions at the beginning, then Maya's not going to like that. So if I change the subdivision axis, 
to 25 or 30, I get this. And that is basically Maya completely going crazy. So it doesn't know what's going on. Because we've altered the object so much. So the action that's being performed here was fine with the default mesh that was created. But everything we did to it after it's is now trying to do this, but then apply all these actions after and it can't it can't work it out. You can also see all these changes if we go to attribute editor. So at the beginning we still have the object which is called polysurface. It used to be called P-sphere, but because we combined it and then extracted some of uh, we extracted an object, it starts to change the name. So to make this clearer in the outliner, I'm going to change this this object back to I'm going to call it sphere. So as I said before, so we have the sphere, we've got the object, and then the this is kind of like the top group for it, if you think about it in that way, and then you actually have the shape, which is the polygon object. So we have sphere and sphere shape, and then all these all these little bits of history are what occur as we were making changes to that object. And so after a while, it's recommended that you delete this history. So there are, there are a couple ways we could do that. So I'm going to hold down spacebar and edit. Now I can go delete by type. So delete by type will do it just for this object. And then delete all by type. That does it to the entire scene. So generally, you would just go delete by type, history. If you are doing any sort of deformations in relation to modeling and you want to tweak them later, I will show examples of these a bit later on, but you might want to use this non-deformer history. So adding specific deformers to objects such as bends or waves. If you want to keep the waves, then you would turn, um, you would use this. But otherwise, if you do history and you've got deformer on it, then it will just bake it into your model. So I've done that. Now you see we have this clear. There are no inputs there, so it's clear. If I go to the attribute editor, so I just have the sphere, sphere shape, and then the initial shading group, which is, this is just there by default. And then we've got Lambert. That is a shader that's applied by default there. So that's why everything's gray in 3D when you start. Gets a Lambert on it. Okay, so in the model, modeling toolkit again, let's see what other options we have. I'm going to make a fresh object, so I'm just going to delete these. So hold down spacebar, create. I'm going to make a cube. So in the modeling toolkit, we have smooth. So, you know, self explanatory. And it's turned the cube into a sphere, which is not great. So if you wanted to create smoother edges on an object like that, but not just turn it into a sphere like what happened there, there are a few ways we could do it. So in the modeling toolkit, you can actually see something called bevel. So I can just hit that and see what happens. Okay, again, not that ideal, but if we change the settings a bit, so I'm going to lower the, let's, let's lower this fraction. I'll increase the segments. So, so the depth, the depth was going in and out. So if I go minus one, so default, it was one. So I, accidentally click that with my mouse. Uh, the segments, so that's the amount of cuts it will add on the side. So we can see there, I start to alter this. So by default, it's like that. So that's a bit harsh. So I'm going to bring it up to four. And then the fraction, that is, as you can see, it's essentially the thickness of that corner that's added. So let's make it pretty low, 0 0.1, or maybe even lower than that, 0 
zero one. It's very tight. Okay, cool. So there we go, pristine. That's pretty good. And when now to get rid of this, I would just go back to object mode and that will remove it. If I go back to channel box, you can see I have this poly bevel. So as I said before, if you start manipulating this object and you think, oh, I want to change the edges, you can't really go back on this. Like it will, if you've if you've deleted faces and things like that on your model, it will end up screwing things up. So I'm going to delete history on this now. Let's go back to the modeling toolkit. By the way, to get to these options down here, I'm showing you what's in the modeling toolkit, but you can do bevel, um, do bevels through that modeling quick menu. So if I make another cube, and if I wanted to do a bevel, I could hold down shift and then right click. So this is like the modeling, it's pretty much the model, modeling toolkit, but just in a faster way, um, faster method of getting to it. So bevel is, should be somewhere down here. Maybe not, I lied. Okay, fair enough. It's not there, but we do have Boolean, which will come up as well. That's pretty useful, because you can see Booleans on the right-hand side in the toolkit area. Cool. Otherwise, all the options, as said before, they are, if you're down spacebar, and then you've got these few modeling menus like edit mesh and the bevel is there and it's even telling us the hotkey control B. Cool, let's move on to the next thing. So we have boolean and so as it's kind of illustrated in that picture, it's two objects affecting each other. So you can minus and plus things from each other essentially. But if I select this now, I'll get this error popping up. It's because it can't calculate a boolean because there is nothing to to work with. So you need two objects at least. So I'm gonna press Control D with that cube selected to duplicate it. I'm gonna hit R, scale it down. So now it's intersected there. If you want to see wireframes on everything when you're moving around, there are a few options. So in the shading tab, we have wireframe on shaded, and then we also have things like x-ray. So that will make everything 50% like that. So if you want to be able to see through, you could do that. And then you can also add wireframe on shaded. So I'm going to turn off x-ray. So in order to do this boolean, I need to select one object, then the other. So shift selected the lower box. I'll hit boolean. And so it doesn't look like it's done much, but with the wireframe on, we can see it's actually created this cut between the corners because it's trying to combine these. So I know if I, if I looked inside, you can see it's removed there would have been a face there before. So if I if I delete these faces to show you what it's done. So now we have a hole there and it began attaching the objects. So it added in these lines here, which is good. But when I mentioned topology earlier, this is not very good topology. So let's select this. I'll try smoother. And not only are the edges not hard enough, so there are not enough cuts, so it's completely squishing it into this weird shape. But we're actually missing a line here, so the smoothing will actually be very incorrect. So if you if you end up using a boolean and you get this sort of result, which will be highly likely, you'll end up, so these edges are great because it's, we need to turn these into quads essentially, so everything has 
four sides. So with the modeling toolkit over, if I wanted to fix this, I can use the multi-cut. So I could select one vertex and another vertex and then hit enter. So now let's fix that. So we now have a nice quad there. I could do the same on the other side. Hit enter. There we go. And then go back to object mode when I'm done. Cool. Uh, we do have some move settings down here. So mine's actually on component, which is a bit odd. It should normally be on, on the world. And so what that will be is your manipulator in the middle. So, so the forward, left, right, up, down, that will be in the world space, which means it's in relation to this grid. So this grid that's on the floor. We can, we can also see in the bottom left hand side of the viewer. So we've got the Z axis, the X and the Y, so we know where they're going. But when you start to move objects out and about, manipulate them further into your scene, you might want to move them in relation to the object. So I've just rotated this into a random location. And I can change to object mode and it will it will change your manipulator tool to be in relation to the faces of your object. So now let's switch between that again. So world, so with world rotation on, as I've moved this object out into the space, then it's still keeping the axis in relation to the, the world, which would be fine, but because we want this object sort of in a random place rotated in in space and it'll be useful to manipulate the object in relation to itself so by changing to object I can now easily move it forward and back left right that sort of thing up and down because if I wanted to rotate this and I wanted to rotate it forward like that I can easily do this now whereas if I was in the world space and I wanted to rotate it forward in relation to where this sticky out bit is then I can I can do that because that's you know the axis is a bit screwed up but it's because it's not in relation to the object so otherwise I'd have to try and awkwardly rotate it in selecting in a random area of the rotation tool so I'll change that back to object you've got component which relates to what's selected essentially like the faces and the edges custom you can move um, you can you can essentially move the manipulator tool yourself which can be useful but generally I would stay away gimbal no just no don't touch it <laughs> you won't need that Great. Okay, so I think I've covered the main the main aspects. So we've got box modeling. So so essentially, as I said before, that is modeling an object that you're already starting with an object. So let's say I want to extrude this. Uh, I want to make this taller. So either in the modeling toolkit or holding right click. So in right click it would be face there, or in the modeling toolkit it's that selection there. So I could delete that, that face. I've actually selected the back. So if you do that, if you accidentally select more than one face, you can hold down control and click and remove the selection. So I'll delete the top face. And because I want this shape to continue up, I'm going to go to edge mode. So that was holding right click, go to edge mode. You can see it's changed in my modeling toolkit to where I'm going. Now I'll double click on this edge, see if it selects all the edges of that object. So has it done it? No. So I'm gonna shift select the other edges.
Okay, so I've selected that. And if I want to bring this up, I will click extrude on the right hand side. And so as soon as I do that, it brings up this manipulator tool. And I would say before dragging it out, just consider what it's doing. So we already talked about the world space of the manipulator tool. So by default, it is in relation to this grid. So left, right, up, down. But looking at here now, after clicking the extrude, it's now doing it in relation to the normal of the edge, which is basically the direction it's facing. So the face is this polygon here is at a slight angle. So that's why we get this this extrude. It's saying, oh, we can we can move it in the direction of the face normal. And the face normal is essentially the top facing um, side of that polygon. So it's doing it in relation to this, this long, thin edge. So let's see what it does. So if I do that, if I just pull one axis, you can see we're not getting a perfect straight pull up because it's, again, it's doing it in relation to that, that edge direction. But I would also say, look at the position or the angle of the, the polygon face. Although we're extruding the edge, it's doing it in relation to that whole face, which is at a slight angle. So let's see what happens when I pull that in. So, I mean, that's not so bad, but I did want it to go straight up. And let's do it on the x-axis, see what happens. Look at that complete mass. So in order to get around this, I could just press W on the keyboard or go to the move tool. And what that does is it will keep the edges still selected, but it will just change it to the to the world space again, or actually down, down here it's in object. So it's doing it in relation to the object. So that's cool, I've moved it up perfectly straight. And if I want to extrude again, I can extrude using other tools. So now, now you can see this after doing the extrude again, that I actually get the correct manipulator look that we need. So I can pull things up and down, left and right, perfectly fine. But let's say I want to, I want to pull these faces inwards to close the hole. So I can press R on the keyboard, go to scale mode, go inwards like that, or I could go outwards like that. So these polygons that are created, because they're single sided, that's why the inside is black. So when you try, if, if you tried to render this now, these would be perfectly black and then you would get the gray of the Lambert there. So I can also extrude things and rotate them. So I'm going to hit G because I've just performed an extrude. So I did extrude, I hit R, scaled it, and then if I press G, it will repeat my last command, which was an extrude. So I'm going to hit W on my keyboard to reset the manipulator so that in relation to the object or, or wherever I set it down here. And then I'll pull it up. Whoops. And I can also rotate things. So press E on the keyboard or go to the left hand side. So I can rotate there. Cool. And what else? Okay, you might need to combine edges. Let's say, let's say we want to turn this into a pyramid shape, so I could scale it closer. But then I'm I'm always going to have a slight hole, even if these are is a combined. Because when it comes to smoothing, you can see there's the hole popping up. Even if I pull that tight. We can try and hide it, but we do need to merge these together. <coughs> so in order to merge things, you can merge vertices together. So I can select all those vertices. Let's see if it's in the modeling toolkit. I think I said before, I don't really use this, but it might be easier for anyone just starting with Maya. 
So I'm going to hold Shift, right click, and now with these vertices selected, I get a few options. So I'm going to go to Merge Vertices and then Merge Vertices again. And now it's turned these points into a single one. So I'm going to go back to Object Mode just so I can I can select things again. Cool. So now we have a, a pyramid point. And as you can see, there's not enough cuts in there, so I still get this weird shape. So when I talk about the adding cuts in, essentially the more cuts you will add when it comes to smoothing an object, it will then create rigid edges for that particular area. I thought there might be insert edge loop on the right hand side, but I can't see it in the modeling toolkit, which I'm kind of surprised by. You have multi-cut, so that creates polygons. But then you would also create polygons by adding in edge loops. So, so I want to add some cuts into this. So a way of doing that is holding shift, right click, insert edge loop. These boxes on the right hand side, they will give you further options to whatever your asking minds do. So I'm going to click on that option box. And so the only two you'll really need to use would be relative distance from edge and multiple edge loops. So if you want, if I want to cut down here, precisely down the middle, then what I would do is rather than do relative distance from edge, because that, that's just default, so I'd have to just guess. So let's say I, I really want it precise. So I can go multiple edge loops and just change it to one and then just tap. You see it's put it perfectly in the center of that area. So let's smooth and see if that differs in the look. Not really. So I'm going to add in a few more cuts to the edges to see what will happen. But you'll see what happens here. So these are triangles. So it won't let you add in the extra edge loops on a triangle because it needs to create these four um, four sided shapes. So these, these polygons are built of four edges and Maya is not liking that we're trying to cut this in. So we could get around that by cutting in our own edges using whatever that tool is called, the multi-cut but it won't be precise and nice. So in this instance, what, what I would have to do is just create, I'm deleting those faces. So I went to edge mode and then I'm just hitting delete on the keyboard. So I'm going to select this edge, double click to get all of it. Press W on the keyboard to reset the manipulator and then pressing R to scale. So I'm going to keep it as quads for this example. Go back to object mode, I always do that. And press 3. So look at this. <laughs> okay, perfect time to show bridging. So I've accidentally deleted that hole. So now we get that, that weird exploded look. So there are two ways that I can join this. So if I want to bring the edges together, I go to edge mode, so that's right click, or again, on the top right hand side of the modeling toolkit, select one edge, select, sh shift select the other one. Let's see if it's down here. It is, cool, bridge. There we go, and you can add further cuts. So divisions will be further cuts into it. Taper is probably in relation to the edges of it. I've never used it before. And then twist, I guess you would need divisions to affect that. No, generally I just keep keep that to default. I just need to join those two edges. So I'll go back to object mode. I'm gonna keep on saying that just because people forget to do that. So go back to object mode after everything you do because You'll end up trying to click on things and then you'll get angry and just want to smash up your keyboard. So I'm going to delete this face again. I'll show you another way in which you can patch up the hole. 
which it's kind of a more intuitive way I guess but it's also a bit more dangerous so I'm gonna hold down shift right click append to polygon tool so this is another way to fill up the hole so I get a prompt here that says uh, click the boundary edge then click the the other side essentially so it's good and bad but because we're using this little cursor crosshair type thing it means we can accidentally select the incorrect faces so let's say I click that one there click the other one there and hit enter great that worked that worked fine but I'll show you what can happen so I'm gonna hold shift right right click and go to append polygon click this face and let's see if I can click this one back here you see I can look look what it's just done that's completely messed up so if you can imagine when you start to make a lot of cuts all right I'm gonna to go to object mode before I can continue talking actually you see I'm not in object mode so now it's just adding all these extra faces so now we're in a bit of a bit of a pickle with Maya so I'm gonna object mode and then I hit W to get rid of that tool because some of these tools in Maya even when you go back to object mode they're still affecting the cursor so as you can see there I did actually go back to object mode but it was still um, the cursor was still in append to polygon mode so now I have this complete disaster here so I'm going to select that face that I made and it created a lot of history there so in my channel box I can see this and in my attribute editor box so I'm going to delete the history so edit and there's nothing else in my scene so I can do delete all by type history so that append to polygon tool that will come up um, you might get that issue when you're when you're cutting a lot into a model and then you want to connect two things so it might be worth your while just using bridge okay and I'm just gonna look at one more thing so this is just the modeling overview So let's say I want to join these these edges together. So let's just double check if it's in the modeling toolkit. No, it's not. Okay. So I want to join these together, but I like this topology. We have this nice nice quads there. So what I could do is I can use an option called whoops. There we go. So over the object, I'm going to hold shift, right click, and go to, where is it, fill hole. So there we go. So now it's just put another quad in there. So this can be good and bad. You know, with the, it depends what type of object you're making. Like with a sphere, you can see that there are triangles at the top, but they don't, they don't necessarily appear when it's shading, shaded, but keeping everything to quads is just a good practice to keep up. Um, so with the, I'm just going to show another thing with the boolean. So I'm going to create a sphere. So the boolean is pretty powerful, but it has its pros and cons. It will create terrible topology. So let's just scale this sphere down. So let's say I want I want this sphere down there. So with with the modeling toolkit, it does have the options there with a nice little picture, but it doesn't have all the options that are there. There are more options available to the Boolean. So I'm going to select this sphere and then this object. So I'm going to go shift, right click, and go to Booleans, and you see we, we get a few more difference there. So in the modeling toolkit, it's doing the union. But let's say I want to remove the sphere away from the other object. 
you can actually see the demonstration picture there so that's what I can do so I click on the option box next to it and I'll hit apply and it's done that so what that means is I just had the object selected in the incorrect order for what I want so I'll select this main object and then the sphere and then click apply and now we have this perfect spherical indentation I'm going to turn off the wireframe just so we can see that so that's pretty cool I'm going to see what happens when I smooth it and oh dear oh dear look at that that's pretty naff so the pros and cons with using the boolean is we have this perfect indentation there of a sphere but now we have all these edges coming in and out so we've got these edges they're not connected up so this face here technically has I don't know, let's say about 10 edges so a polygon is meant to be a four-sided shape and now this has got like 15 or something and there as well so when it comes to smoothing it Maya is just having a heart attack he doesn't know what's going on so we could use the multi-cut tool and try and join these up